Young Sheldon is a blast of a series. But did you ever think of how hard it was to play the Coopers? Watch this video to learn all the weird rules the cast of the show had to follow. Why was Ian Armitage intimidated by trains? Bazinga. <laughs> Which real life disturbing event affected Reagan Rivard's appearance? This is the part where I cry. And why Montana Jordan might be the only actor who's not going to miss young Sheldon. Let's dive in. Rule number one, no prompting. Young minds, big lines. It's hilarious to watch Sheldon effortlessly rattling on some science-related topics. Needless to say, we use a PID controller to minimize the dispersions to the language. <laughs> <laughs> but playing the quirky genius takes lots of work to memorize all these lines. Ian explained that he has a special technique. He usually breaks the long paragraphs up into bits, learns them, and then puts all the parts together. Thankfully, Ian doesn't have to understand that. I have no idea what I just said. <laughs> but you said it very well, and that's all that matters. However, sometimes even this method doesn't help. Like in an episode where Sheldon volunteered as a docent in a train museum. Number 701 was built in 1930 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works. It was a superheated 484 class GS1. Somehow his brain couldn't keep track of all the terms. And that is kind of strange as Ian has no problem following the second rule. Do your homework. Child actors' day-to-day -day lives are different compared to those of other kids or adult actors. Reagan, Ian, and Montana spend a sizable portion of the year filming the show or working on other acting jobs. But as minors, they also have to go to school. According to the law, children are allowed to work fewer hours a day than their adult co-stars. Moreover, they should also have three hours of school time. Such a strict schedule affects everybody on set and makes filming the series longer. Usually, the kids shoot some scenes, pause for 20 minutes of school, then shoot a bit more. And that goes on until all the breaks add up to three hours. It's easier for Montana now, as he's 21 already and can hang out with adult actors. But Ian and Reagan still do their homework between takes. Amazingly, Armitage still has some time for his hobby. Now I'm sort of at that point where I've done most of my normal schoolwork. And I kind of just get to do fun stuff, like things that I'm interested in, like learning Arabic. Reagan has another occupation in her downtime. She has long been a big reader, and now she's going to become a published writer herself. Reagan's debut novel, Rules for Fake Girlfriends, will be released in fall 2025. I knew I always wanted to be an author. I'm genuinely so excited about this, like it's a dream come true. And we are moving on to the next challenge for the young Sheldon cast. Live the look. Actors often have to change their looks for their roles. The tricky part is that they have to maintain their appearance for as long as the show lasts. Montana had no option but to rock his mullet, even though he was never a fan of it. And Reagan wasn't allowed to cut her hair. Finally, after four years of asking, the crew agreed to let her do it. But the reason for it was quite disturbing. Revord and her mom got into a car accident. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but left the young actress scared quite badly. However, instead of taking a break, Reagan insisted on working. She had a difficult time shooting the episode where Missy was behind the wheel for the most part. To cheer her up, she was finally allowed to trim her mane, which she did. For Armitage, the situation was almost the opposite. In the first season, he had to change his hair color. Well, actually, they dyed it for Sheldon because it was so blonde. It didn't look like Mr. Jim. But they don't have to do it anymore, as his hairs got naturally darker. Only one actress was allowed to choose what her character would look like. Producers gave Annie Potts a certain freedom to create Sheldon's beloved grandmother. They expected Meemaw would have the same hair color as her daughter. She thought there's nothing wrong with being gray. I think Meemaw might try, be trying to pass herself off as would be uh, Dolly Parton in Steel Magnolias, which happened, which happened in 1989. Mm -hmm. Also, that highlighted the differences between Annie's character and Mary. Apart from the hairdos, young Sheldon cast had to deal with another challenge, fashion. So here's rule number four. Dress the part. The adult actors didn't have any problems with being on the show based in the 1980s. Actually, they had a great time pulling out some classics. 
But for Ian, Reagan, and Montana, those good old times are a complete mystery. Sometimes they struggled with the seemingly simplest things. Ian didn't understand what a dial tone no. was. What? That he was dialing first. And then picking up the And then the picking phone. up the phone. And Reagan had no idea what the wall phone was. She also revealed that she wasn't a huge fan of the clothes from the 80s, as everything was tight and itchy. Still, she had some fun whenever there was a costume fitting. Ian also had his fair share of surprise with the 80s and 90s fashion. Miss Annie will come on set in one of her Meemaw shirts, and then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll like put my arm around her and I'll be like, your shoulder feels weird. And then she's like, <laughs> all of it's padded. Hilariously, this statement detail is trending again. I, I was freaked out when shoulder pads came back, but, but they're here. <laughs> Surprisingly, the only person who utterly dislikes the style of that era is Annie. I think it's just as ugly now as it was. <laughs> Still, whatever the actors think about this rule, they have to follow it, just as the next one. Respect the OG. Believe it or not, the younger cast of the show still haven't watched TBBT. I, I never watched The Big Bang, but I do think that that would be cool. Because it's like you kind of get to see where it all started. When Reagan and Ian were cast to young Sheldon, they were way too young to watch the original series. So how did they prepare for their roles? Ian needed to know a lot about his character. And that's where the older Sheldon actor came to help. Jim Parsons taught him everything he knew about the genius physicist after 12 years of playing him. He's such an incredible Sheldon coach, which is sort of a given. Um, you don't need much coaching. <laughs> Even now, Ian has only watched separate scenes as part of his character research. For example, the episodes featuring Sheldon's interactions with his mom. But there's one Cooper kid actor for whom TBBT was more or less age appropriate. That was Montana. However, he also hasn't watched it. I'm allowed, but I don't, I don't really watch TV. I mean, I like, <laughs> that didn't matter much, as we only saw Sheldon's older brother in a few episodes of The Big Bang. And so was the next rule but the cast of the show followed it anyway. Love your family. Family Dynamics has always been crucial for the hit sitcom, as it's not all about Sheldon alone. That's why it's so fun to watch how his family adapted to having a child prodigy among them. For the actors being on set, felt like home. As you can see, we do everything together. Yes, we work together, we travel together. The kids were actually eager to connect with each other from the very start. Like, I'm an only child, and he is two, and he has two older sisters, so it feels like we're like an actual family, and I have like two brothers. While Sheldon is Meemaw's favorite, off-screen Annie seems to love all of the kids equally, so she enjoys having them around. The veteran actress even revealed that they were like practice grandchildren before she had her own. It's yeah, amazing. they were. They were. They were good starter kids. I'll tell you. <laughs> she even invented a unique nickname. I call them the ferrets. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when we go on a new set or something, it's all very interesting for them. So <laughs> they're in all the drawers and all the boxes, and um, it's fun. The castmates grew only closer with time. But unfortunately, they all have to follow the last and the most recent rule. Get ready to say goodbye. The Cooper Kids actors literally grew up on the show. Reagan shared that looking back at herself in the first seasons felt really weird. Whenever the show started, I was in a car seat, and I'm learning to drive now. For her on-screen brother, the gap between him then and now is even more evident. Like, oftentimes, if, if somebody recognizes me and they say, like, I, I watched the pilot recently, <laughs> and you look so different, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that was seven years ago. <laughs> yeah. However, Ian revealed that Montana hasn't changed much. Even though he's grown, like, physically, you can see it looks different, he's had the same deep Texan accent since he was, like, a four-year-old. Alas, all good things come to an end one day. Season seven is the final one for young Sheldon. So how do the young actors feel about it? I'm of course sad. The main thing to keep in mind is just gratitude because it's been so wonderful and so much fun. It's tough for everyone on the show to part with the characters they've been together for so long. But most of all, they will miss their second family. Out of all the amazing things that have come from the show, I think it's the family aspect that, I ha that we have on the set. As for her future plans, Reagan revealed she'd love to play an MCU character, as doing her stunts would be cool. She also has a ton of book ideas and wants to once develop her own projects. Ian's plans seem to be a little bit more solid at the moment. 
I have a couple tentative things lined up, uh, maybe a movie or two. We'll see what happens, but uh, right now just sort of going with the flow and having a great time doing it. However, it's Montana who's getting his own show. He and Emily Osment are reprising their roles in the series, centered around Georgie and Mandy. Would you watch it? Let us know in the comments and check out our other videos.